If you've been working with wood for long, you've probably built a few jigs for your table saw. I love a good jig because they can make my work faster, more accurate, definitely safer, and often more enjoyable. Some jigs are more useful than others, but this is one of my all-time favorites. It's called an elephant, though I've seen it called many other things over the years as well. It's an idea that's been around for decades, and you may have seen versions of it in woodworking magazines or other sources in the past. Bob Van Dyke, for example, has written about his several times over the years in Fine Woodworking Magazine. Mine is a simpler design than most, so it's easy to build from just a few scraps of plywood, but there are some unique features that you don't typically see. I think you're gonna find this very interesting. So I'm gonna show you how to build it really quickly. It'll only take a couple minutes. Then I'll show you how it works. My design is made from three strips of plywood. Each are around two feet long. One is around 10 inches wide, the other is three and a half inches, and the last one is about three inches. The edge of the three and a half inch strip is attached to the face of the widest panel one inch away from its edge. I'm using some 123 blocks as spacers to make the alignment easier. 123 blocks have so many uses in the shop. I did make a video all about them in the past. I'll link to that below so you can check it out. The three inch strip is then attached to the edge of the three and a half inch one, as you see me doing here. Finally, I made two simple brackets to just help square everything up and add some strength. Note that the brackets are set in about three or four inches from each end of the jig. That's about all there is to building it. It'll only take you, I'd say, 15 minutes, which isn't much for all that this thing can do. Now here's how it works. For most operations, the tall side goes against the table saw fence where it's secured with a clamp on each end. Some of the more complex L fences that I've seen have built-in mechanisms so you can raise and lower it to adjust the gap on the top of your saw based on the thickness of the material you're going to be working with. Some even have tracking mechanisms so you can keep the jig parallel to the top of the saw as you raise and lower it. But the thing is, a one inch gap will accommodate virtually all your materials from 3 eighths of an inch thin to 7 eighths of an inch thick. You can raise the jig to get a little more capacity in rare situations, but most of the time, I just place that one inch lip that I created on the bottom right on top of the saw, because that automatically sets it parallel to the top of the saw, and it gives it a gap that will work for 99.9% .9 of my materials. The first thing I'll show you how to do with it is straighten an edge. It doesn't matter how crooked that edge is, I just attach a straight strip of plywood to the face of the board. For this demo, I'm using some pin nails, but you could certainly use double-sided tape or hot melt glue to avoid marring your workpiece. I set the saw blade height just below the overhanging portion of the jig and adjusted its face flush with the side of the blade's teeth. Now the strip of plywood runs against the L fence and whatever is beneath that overhang is cut away. My once crooked edge comes out nice and straight. The same principle can be applied to cutting tapered edges by merely angling the strip of plywood before you attach it to the board. In fact, you could take this a step further and use this jig to cut repeatable odd shapes with templates. Notice how none of the edges of this template are parallel to an edge on the workpiece beneath it. Yet I can cut all the way around the shape in four passes and batch out multiple identical odd shapes with templates. Check out this panel. It needs some trimming to flush up my edge banding, which is slightly too wide. For this, I lay a piece of 2x4 next to my fence to slightly raise the jig above the saw when I rotate it to take advantage of the extra height on its back side. My blade is once again set flush with the fence face, and I'm not too worried that the jig isn't perfectly perpendicular to the top of the saw because I usually slightly chamfer the edges of my banding with the sanding block anyway. It only takes one pass with the panel on edge, supported on the bottom with a push block, and my banding is perfectly flush with the surface of the panel. Now wait a minute, flush trimming, template cutting, aren't these tasks usually done with a router and a flush trim bit? Sure, but a table saw blade with its many carbide teeth can do a lot more of these things before it becomes dull compared to just two cutters on a router bit. So some people do like to use table saws for these tasks whenever possible. Want to see the rabbits? For this, I'm attaching a strip of plywood along the edge where I want the rabbit to be, but on the opposite face. The blade is set to the proper height, and as usual, it's flush with the face of the jig. 
I'm cutting my rabbit with multiple passes using a regular saw blade, but you could certainly save time by cutting it in a single pass if you own a dado set. Those are just a few of the ways I most often use my L-Fence design, but this is such a versatile jig and so easy to build that I am sure you're gonna find many other uses for it as well. So try it out and see for yourself. Now check this out. It's just a couple of cuts. Your ears will be fine, right? They will be if you have your Isotunes Bluetooth earbuds in because you'd already have your ANSI certified hearing protection on because you're listening to your favorite music and podcasts and you're supporting a small family business at the same time. Please use the link below this video to learn more and to show them you support what we do as well.